Outside the Brazilian city of Foz de Iguaçu, in the triple frontier, customs police are preparing to head out. This is one of their weekly raids in a region notorious for contraband. Every year, they seize tens of millions of dollars worth of goods. Paulo Kawashita is leading the operation. He's coordinating the different teams stationed in the area. We've been granted permission to film how Brazilian customs officers patrol this region. We're told it's unlikely to be dangerous, but like them, have been given protective clothing. This corner of the country that borders Paraguay and Argentina is the gateway to the cities of Rio and Sao Paulo and the rest of Brazil. So this is the only motorway that leaves Foz de Iguaçu. So what the customs officers have done is block off this exit and they're forcing all the vehicles to go through control. We have two or three tipos de alvo possíveis que nós vamos interceptar. Nós temos passando pela rodovia é, veículos carregados, automóveis, carros de passeio carregados com contrabando. Tá? Pode ser cigarro, pode ser droga, pode ser mercadoria. Tá? Officers are particularly looking out for tourist buses that have crossed over from Paraguay. On these checks, they often find narcotics and firearms, but most usually electronics and smaller consumer goods. As they stop trucks, vans and private cars, one of the first vehicles pulled over is a coach called the Silver Bullet. Officers find the bus filled with undeclared goods. Though the owner protests, the officers go on board to continue their search. If customs determine these goods are for resale, they will be impounding them. The officers here told us they're used to looking for telltale signs. Some vehicles are lower under the sheer weight of merchandise. This operation lasted barely two hours. They seized two cars as well as the silver bus. While customs inspected all belongings back at headquarters, off camera, the driver of the bus told us he had saved up four months wages just to be able to buy an iPhone on this trip. His phone was confiscated. Despite his disappointment, he admitted that everyone on board knew the risk they were running. Customs reported they found over $77,000 worth of goods alone on the bus. Another car seized had over $10,000 worth of cell phones. The haul from an operation of just a few hours was nearly $100,000. This region is known as the Triple Frontier, or the Tri-Border Area. To the west, Paraguay, with Brazil and Argentina to the east, where the Iguazu and Paraná rivers meet. Here, amongst the subtropical rainforest, is one of South America's prime tourist destinations, the majestic Iguazu waterfalls. Over half a million tourists visit here every year. The falls straddle the natural border between Brazil and Argentina. The two countries, famed for their rivalry in football, share the UNESCO heritage site. Na realidade tem é uma competição de anjo saudável, né? Uma realidade muito saudável entre os hermanos argentinos. 70% das cataratas estão do lado argentino. 
mas no Brasil a gente fica com, fica com a vista. Há ah, essa brincadeira, essa realidade, mas na realidade uma completa a outra. Ah, eu prefiro o brasileiro, é claro. <risos> Adal Ribeiro is the general manager at one of the top resorts in Foz do Iguaçu, the Brazilian city nearest the falls. Veja bem, o destino ele mudou bastante esse perfil, né? Porque é, antes o, o destino Iguaçu, além das cataratas e, e tal, ele recebia um turismo de compras, né? E esse perfil mudou bastante, né? As well as the falls, Foz do Iguaçu also hosts one of the largest engineering projects on the planet. The Itaipu Dam provides all of Paraguay's electricity needs and up to 20% of Brazil's. The location of the dam was chosen in the disputed border area between Brazil and Paraguay. And when work began, there was the memory of the 19th century war of the Triple Alliance, when Paraguay's population was decimated by a coalition of Brazilian, Argentine and Uruguayan forces. The Itaipu Dam is an example of bilateral cooperation. The workforce, directors and earnings are all split equally between the two countries. The construction work of the dam was just part of the driving force behind this city's growth, with neighbourhoods like this built for workers. Yet already tax legislation had made it attractive to traders from across the world. Today, there are over 80 nationalities registered as living in Foz de Iguaçu. It's a beautiful place, uh, we have the falls. We have the, the problem because the difference of this, these countries, Argentina, Brazil and Paraguay, um, uh, actually the, we are at the South America, but we have the different kind of cultures uh, and laws. At the city police, José Naspini says they see major crime like arms and weapons smuggling and human trafficking in addition to the vast quantities of contraband. The police here are keen to show pictures of drug traffickers arrested just weeks before our visit with kilos of marijuana and with plane tickets onwards to Europe. If you know the borders with the uh, Mexico in the United States and Mexico and uh, San Diego and Tijuana, 20 years ago, I think that this border is similar like there, okay? The image of Foz de Guasu precedes it. In September 2016, this city made headlines in Argentina when the fugitive Ibar Perez Corradi was detained. Perez Corradi had been on the run since 2012, the intellectual author of a triple murder linked to the trafficking of ephedrine, the drug used in methamphetamine production. He was tracked down here, in the heart of Foz de Iguaçu, but had been living for four years in homes in Brazil, but also in Paraguay. The porous border makes this region a hub for illicit trade, a hideout for fugitives. So too the trade in human trafficking, drugs and firearms. And yet the most visible activity is Paraguay's re-export industry. With lower tax rates in Paraguay, traders import here and export to neighbouring countries. Ciudad del Este is the capital city of this trade and is a popular shopping destination in particular for Brazilians. To enter Paraguay, they cross the Friendship Bridge. It was once a hive of activity lined with street hawkers. Now on quiet days there's only the odd stall on the bridge, here selling garlic for a few dollars. There are few quiet days for traders here. Tens of thousands cross between Brazil and Paraguay every week. Many simply walk the 500 meter distance between the two countries. So too, there are 1,500 registered motor taxis ferrying people between Foz de Iguaçu and Ciudad del Este. The drivers share the work. Paraguayans take passengers to Brazil, Brazilians take them to Paraguay. On the Brazil side, Miravaldo Massini has been working as a motor taxi driver since 1999. He says in the past 10 years, the volume of traffic has dropped and colleagues have been leaving the city to look elsewhere for work. These drivers now want to form a union. 
Miravaldo tells me as we cross the bridge that they have to pay passenger insurance, $35 a year, amongst other costs. He usually makes about 15 trips like this on a busy weekend, charging around $3 each time. This is not lucrative work. Ciudad del Este is famed as the place where you can get anything you want, either on the street or in the malls. The authorities are keen to be seen to be working to improve the city's reputation. And while many of the locals are used to the tension in this city, many stores are guarded by armed security. Anyone arriving in this city from across the river is likely approached, as we were. This young man relies on commission from bringing in customers to an electronic shop. The lower tax rates make purchases here attractive, but Brazilians have a limit of just $300 worth of goods per person per month. As had been made clear to us, there are courier services available with the help of friends in the right places. Those courier services range from large-scale transportation to people paid a small amount to bring over goods, like many of those on the silver bus that customs impounded. In Brazilian slang, these people are called laranjas. É uma região que há ainda um movimento muito grande de contrabando, né, de comércio ilegal de mercadorias que são trazidas desses países, mas principalmente do Paraguai para o Brasil. Nós tínhamos um volume muito grande de mercadorias que eram trazidas, muito maior do que é hoje, há cerca de 15, 20 anos atrás. Esse volume já se estimou que era em, em torno aí de 20 bilhões de, de dólares. The amount of goods that are seized is a fraction of what is entering the country, according to Rafael Rodriguez, head of Foz de Iguaçu Customs. Atualmente, eu diria que uh, se anualmente passam em torno de 4 bilhões de dólares, essa é a estimativa, nós temos uma apreensão a mais ou menos de 80 milhões de dólares. A decade ago, scenes like this were common. Vast convoys of buses and coaches, all but impossible to control. Today, the situation is very different. The merchandise seized by customs end up in these deposits. In Foz de Iguaçu alone, there are three deposits like this. Customs officer Neri Parceliano says part of him misses the adrenaline of the raids from previous years. Now he's based at the headquarters in the city. He's seen major changes in the type of products brought in from Paraguay in the re-export industry. Na época dos tigres asiáticos, na década de 90, se você pegar assim, os produtos que prevaleciam né, aqui no Brasil, você viu que era onde? Dos tigres asiáticos. Hoje não. Eu penso que hoje a predominância é de produtos feitos na China. Pelo custo de produção ser menor, né? Impounded goods stored here range from electronics and medicines from China to tires, motorbikes and even human hair imported from India. Hair extensions is a booming trade in Brazil. Customs, meanwhile, donate this to chemotherapy patients in local hospitals. Just as the fitness business offers lucrative returns, so too does the illegal cigarette trade. Ah, se você pegar, você vai ver que é tudo cigarro fabricado no Paraguai. Marca. Illegal cigarette smuggling is worth millions of dollars per year. The merchandise impounded by customs is destroyed. But this is not the only smoking market that Paraguay supplies. Reports in the press suggest Paraguay produces 50,000 metric tons of cannabis every year, with 80% making its way into Brazil. While we were filming in Foz de Iguaçu, the Argentine authorities announced a major haul of marijuana a few hundred miles south. So too, many other drugs are smuggled. In October 2016, Brazil Customs seized over 300 kilos of cocaine. Oh, 
But there are also signs of discontent in the customs agency. When we were here, many officials were on strike over pay. There were signs around the city in protest at a lack of funding to properly patrol the border. The 9-11 attacks brought US attention to this region. This area has long had a large Syrian and Lebanese community. And in Argentina, there are suspicions that the culprits behind two bombings in the 1990s, including the Jewish cultural center, the AMIA, were based in this region. But the investigation into those bombings has stalled. 85 victims from the AMIA bombing are still awaiting justice. And despite suspicions, in July 2012, a US Department of State report wrote no credible information showed Islamist extremist groups used the tri-border area for terrorist training or other operational activity. The police in Foz de Guasu say the links are tenuous, and most probably an overlapping of money sent home to family members that is intercepted. When the money uh, arrived at this country, the place where the money arrived, are controlled by Qasira or Islamic State or other kind of cell terrorism. So you need to pay. If you want to, to, to get this money, you need to pay for this. This is the, 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 the few kind of the, the money get of this, this cell. What is for certain is that Brazil is suffering its worst recession in decades, in addition to the political crisis in which President Dilma Rousseff was removed from office in 2016. We were told the volume of trade and contraband has dropped enormously, but along this river are smuggled vast quantities of illegal goods. And working in tandem with customs to stop this are the police. We sold 94 ships, 330 vehicles, né? É, isso aí baixou para 50 embarcações ano, sabe? Mas é, é resultado do bom trabalho, né? Da presença, né? Calori is the vice chief of Nepom, a special police unit that patrols the river. He explains how the police use boats that are seized from smugglers who often have a far more generous budget than the state is able to offer. Nepom stationed here near the Friendship Bridge in early 2016. They say their presence immediately reduced the amount of activity of boats crossing the river. The Nepom chief, Augusto da Cruz Rodriguez, showed how they're using drones to monitor activity too. Tem toda a fiscalização da ponte, tem todos todos os grupos trabalham na ponte, a Polícia Federal, a Receita Federal, a Polícia Rodoviária Federal, a Anvisa, não tudo Mas a gente complementa com esse trabalho nosso aqui de, de, de fazer a vigilância. Então, de, de uma hora em uma hora, ou dependendo do, do piloto aqui. After many years here, Rodriguez and Calori say they're no longer surprised by what they find. Maconha, cocaína, né? seria uma coisa assim que não é que seja estranha. Né? 50 rolos de, de arame farpado. <laughs> Though the police say they've been effective in reducing the amount of traffic, this is dangerous work. The week before we visited, they exchanged gunfire while on patrol. And while we were granted permission to film here, not all of the officers agreed with us joining them on patrol. This is essentially a show of presence. The police check up on landing spots that are known as ports and even have their own names. The barcos that we have here are cerca, I think, menos de 10% of what we had antes. Today we will see, I think, not 10 barcos here. Antes a gente via 60, 70 barcos parados aqui nesse pedaço da Barranca Paraguaia. The recession in Brazil and patrols like this have reduced the amount of contraband crossing. But just as we'd seen with customs, so too the police in Brazil do not have enough numbers, nor have they had a pay rise in six years, and inflation is cutting into their wages.
As the sun falls over the triple frontier, Nepom are preparing to head out. This unit will take position further down the river where police presence is not expected. They await instructions. Guiding them will be these two officers who have set up a lookout from a nearby apartment block. As residents here turn on their televisions, in amongst their antenna, they observe the movement to the south and to the north. No sooner has the sun set, already boats begin to cross the Paraná River. The ground team move into position. While tourists and locals have dinner at a popular restaurant overlooking the river, the unit prepares. They're waiting for further instructions. There are nerves. These are dangerous missions. From the roof, they'll orchestrate the timing to catch one of the boats that is crossing. Soon, they find a target. On the roof, they're worried communication is not getting through. Down on the river, they find a boat with men fishing illegally, but it's not who they were looking for. They've gone too far and must go back. They soon find an abandoned boat, and one officer takes to land to search for contraband. His colleagues await aboard their boat. But as the search continues, the scale of the challenge becomes clear. As one officer described it, this is a game of cat and mouse. Here, they found nothing. No merchandise, no smugglers, just one single boat. This was a disappointing haul, but the very next morning, they will be back patrolling the triple frontier.